Welcome to Gridiron Ring Sports Talk Show covering football and professional wrestling. I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96. Be sure if you haven't done so already, like, follow, subscribe, Gridiron Ring, Grid Ring 18, and myself, your host, the Encyclopedia Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96, on social media. Links are in the description below. WWE Crown Jewel thoughts and opinions here today in this audio recording right here on YouTube. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also be sure to share as well on social media. But we're going to backtrack just a tad back to the biggest event of the summer for the WWE. That's where we'll begin with SummerSlam. We had SummerSlam middle of August as usual, the biggest event of the summer. And then also a few weeks later, uh, as the college football and NFL seasons began as well, uh, we had All Elite Wrestling AEW all out and that was when chris jericho became the first ever aew world champion he will be defending that championship at full gear saturday night november the 9th in baltimore versus the american nightmare cody be sure to go check out my aew full gear predictions right here on gridiron rings youtube channel as well so just backtracking a little bit recapping uh, everything that has been going on uh, in the world of professional wrestling as a lot has happened uh, the past few months from SummerSlam up until now, uh, just recently with Crown Joel Full Gear on Saturday, November 9th, and then Survivor Series weekend in Chicago, November 23rd and 24th in a few weeks. We then had Clash of Champions, and then three days later, NXT was live on the USA Network for the first time ever. One hour apiece for the 18th and 25th shows. Two hours total, the second hour was on the WWE Network. But then a week later on October the 2nd, that's when the war began in AEW and NXT versus one another as AEW debuted on TNT at 8 o'clock from 8 to 10, NXT on USA as well from 8 to 10 o'clock on Wednesday, October the 2nd. And, quote, war, in my opinion, it's not even a war. It's just an awesome time right now to be a professional wrestling fan. Two days later, we had Friday Night SmackDown. Tyson Fury, Braun Strowman was set up for Crown Jewel. Brock Lesnar also became the new WWE Champion once again before Cain Velasquez debuted for the first time ever in the WWE. Go back to AEW and NXT though real quick. Uh, talk about war in quotes as mentioned. Everybody worried about ratings, who's winning uh, versus one another, who's putting on better shows. As mentioned in my opinion it's just an awesome time right now to be a professional wrestling fan. More wrestling is better for everyone. But if I would have to, and I talked about it a little bit during live streams and also tweeted about it uh, during uh, the shows or even after the shows got over that I didn't do live streams of over on Periscope. More live streams, live reactions, play by play on Periscope uh, in the next few weeks and months to come as well. Be sure to follow Cool Hand Luke 96, myself, your host, Encyclopedia Sports, on Twitter and Periscope, Cool Hand Luke 96. But if I had to say somebody won each respective night head-to-head uh, -head for the AEW Dynamite show and NXT on USA, I would say AEW won the opening night on October the 2nd, and then NXT wins a week later. So tied at one apiece. And then they tied, I thought, on the 16th. Uh, so tied 1-1-1. One, one, one in the record books and then actually the AEW Dynamite show that I attended live in person in Pittsburgh on Wednesday October the 23rd videos from that live right here on Gridiron Rings YouTube channel be sure to go check those out including what you don't see on All Elite Wrestling AEW TV even after AEW Dark so be sure to go check those out but then also the same night NXT with a bigger talking point leading in to SmackDown uh, in a few days, uh, and then also Monday Night Raw uh, once the weekend concluded with Finn Balor 
returning to NXT and uh, aligning himself uh, with the Undisputed Era, turning on Johnny Gargano and Tabasa Ciampa, uh, and then uh, just last night on NXT, we had the OC come to Full Sail University for WWE NXT. So for the first time ever, we saw AJ Styles, the phenomenal United States champion right now in the WWE, along with the best tag team in the world, the winners of the tag team turmoil match at Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia on Halloween, the tag team of Big LG, Luke Gallows, not me, and Machine Gun Carl Anderson. We had the OC on NXT last night, which was absolutely awesome. Who would have thought, I sure as hell didn't, uh, that we'd have the OC, uh, Styles, Gallows, and Anderson in NXT in 2019, uh, but we did. But uh, bigger talking point for NXT, technically, in some folks' eyes, at that point, winning that night. But I thought AEW put on a damn good show in Pittsburgh, the one that I actually attended. And then going back, uh, watching them side by side uh, at the same time as I do week in and week out for AEW and NXT with my new two TV setup that I have uh, now for both professional wrestling and football as I if you did not know beginning of the football season uh, especially with AEW and NXT about to start on TV now that they have I went out and bought another TV I have two TVs now side by side watching two events at once and if you tune in live on Periscope to watch my live reactions play by play of professional wrestling events or college or NFL football games you would already know that but I thought AEW damn good show in Pittsburgh and even watching them back the next day a few weeks back um, I still think AEW won that night but as mentioned NXT with a bigger talking point with Finn Balor uh, turning heel it would have been uh, even nicer uh, a little bit more sick if uh, he would have turned on Adam Cole then at that point as well now eventually uh, as NXT is along with AEW keeping us guessing moving forward along with the WWE main roster with some storylines don't really know what's going to happen moving forward but with Adam Cole as your current NXT champion he could very well defend that against Tommaso Ciampa as Ciampa uh, is telling Goldie daddy is home uh, along with Johnny Gargano in the mix if they get DIY back together but then you have Finn Balor back down in NXT now as well so we'll have to see moving forward what exactly happens but that's why we have to watch and uh, ratings everybody's worried about those I could really care less about ratings I just want good professional wrestling week in and week out from all these companies because as mentioned more wrestling is better what a time to be alive to be a professional wrestling fan at the moment move to October the 30th the night before Crown Jewel I thought both shows were average not a whole lot going on. WWE preparing uh, for Crown Jewel the next day uh, overseas. And then uh, also uh, AEW a week and a half out from the Full Gear pay-per-view. So a week later you'd have the go-home show, uh, which I'll get to that here uh, in a second. And also during my uh, Full Gear predictions, so be sure to go check those out right here on YouTube. Now, last night... November the 6th, I thought NXT won, okay, as AEW, uh, in my opinion at least, just did a little too much, they tried a little too hard, I thought, on the full gear, go home show, uh, plus, as mentioned, when you have the OC show up on NXT, uh, in retaliation, invade the yellow brand of the WWE, in retaliation from NXT, invading SmackDown and Monday Night Raw, this past week, uh, the assaults that occurred, uh, you end up winning because it just makes for good TV. Um, but um, that was the past month or so, uh, a little over a month now, uh, since AEW and NXT have been head-to-head -head on national TV. As mentioned, you had Friday Night SmackDown then as well, the debut on Fox. Uh, Friday night, October the 4th, Brock Lesnar, new WWE champion, Cain Velasquez, attacked afterwards in his debut set up their match at crown jewel as well and i'll get to that here in a second 
a couple nights after that, you had the 2019 WWE Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, which saw some controversy with the main event finish with Seth frickin' Rollins and The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. And then a couple weeks after that, I attended Monday Night Raw in Cleveland, Ohio. Videos from that as well right here on YouTube. Be sure to go check those out. And then two nights after that, AEW in Pittsburgh. So a lot going on for myself and then a lot going on in the world of professional wrestling uh, as well. Uh, and then a few days after that, it was uh, the weekend, the final weekend in October. Uh, we had, it was a Sunday morning. Everybody woke up to it. We have the Jordan Miles uh, stuff that was going on with the blackface t-shirt, so on and so forth. And then after that, we have WWE Crown Jewel over in Saudi Arabia, which is going to be the main point of today's recording. Now, as well, Artie had plans to attend Friday Night SmackDown the next night, November the 1st, in Buffalo, New York. And I'll get to that here. Uh, in a second videos from that event right here on YouTube as well so be sure to go check those out but Crown Jewel over in Riyadh Saudi Arabia uh, I'll go over the uh, results of that now I suppose uh, before I move on uh, any further uh, but Crown Jewel I thought it was a damn good pay-per-view I did I thought from start to finish I said this during the live stream uh, over on Periscope live reactions play-by-play of WWE Crown Jewel on Halloween here in the States 2019 from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. From start to finish, I thought WWE Crown Jewel a damn good pay-per-view. And WWE made history uh, once again uh, as they had the first ever WWE women's match in Saudi Arabia with Natalia and Lacey Evans as Natalia picked up the win, making Lacey Evans tap out to the sharpshooter. Lana also traveled over and then made an appearance during Bobby Lashley's entrance. But however, WWE Crown Jewel kicked off with the 20-man number one contender battle royal, which was won by Humberto Carrillo, and then he went on and faced AJ Styles for the United States Championship in a losing effort, so AJ retained his U.S. Championship. Mansoor also defeated Cesaro in what... I thought was a damn good match. Mansoor, future is very, very bright for the kid. Just needs more experience in the ring. His time will come eventually, maybe as a uh, mid-card cruiserweight type of uh, superstar. Um, but really, WWE has only been promoting him as a uh, two-match um, superstar, two-match type of guy per year. Uh, because technically, he just made his debut at the Super Showdown event back in June in the 50-man Battle Royal, which he won, uh, and then defeats Cesaro at Crown Jewel as well just recently. So future very, very bright for Mansoor. Kid can wrestle for damn sure, but uh, it's just a, a matter of time. He just needs more experience, I do believe. But uh, eventually, I think he'll uh, get to uh, the top of his potential for the WWE now. I'm not saying he's going to be a WWE or Universal Champion, but hell, you never know. I mean, they might put him in a WWE or Universal Championship match uh, in one of the Saudi pay-per-views, whether it be Super Showdown, Crown Jewel reports are they will be heading back over in February after the Royal Rumble in a few months. Uh, maybe at that point or sometime you know, down the road as a 10-year agreement is still on the table on paper. All the I's and T's are dotted and crossed still, um, even with everything that has happened. I'll get to that here uh, in a second. Maybe eventually Mansoor will have a championship match and end up becoming a champion in the WWE on uh, his home soil in Saudi Arabia. But only time will tell uh, moving forward. Also during Crown Jewel, as mentioned, we had the tag team turmoil match to determine the best tag team in the world during the WWE World Cup. That was won by the OC, the club, to sweep me. They defeated the New Day, Viking Raiders, Heavy Machinery, the Lucha House Party, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, along with the Revival, Bobby Roode and Adolph Ziggler, along with the B Team. And then also we had Team Hogan versus Team Flair. 
as the immortal Hulk Hogan was in attendance, along with the Nature Boy, the 16-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion, two-time WWE Hall of Famer as well. Ric Flair was also in attendance for Crown Jewel, but Team Hogan, Roman Reigns, Rusev, the one and only Ricochet, along with Shorty G, and all lead defeated the Viper, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, all hail King Corbin, along with Shinsuke Nakamura and Drew McIntyre. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Seth Rollins went toe-to-toe. I'll get to that Universal Heavyweight Championship main event match here in a second. However, though, Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury went at it. Fury ended up knocking out Strowman uh, via countout as Strowman could not get back in the ring after a, a knockout on the ring apron. Uh, a decent match for everything against uh, the uh, two superstars. Fury, a undefeated heavyweight boxer at the moment. He's got another fight coming up in a couple months as well. Uh, and he looked pretty decent. Uh, they made him look strong as possible, but then they uh, still made Strowman look strong afterwards moving forward, and we'll see if he gets a championship run uh, in the next few months as well, but only time is going to tell for that. Moving forward, Brock Lesnar then as well defeated Kane Velasquez to retain his WWE Championship via tap out by Kane during the Kimura lock in the opening contest of Crown Jewel. And then in the main event, the Fiend Bray Wyatt defeated Seth Frickin' Rollins to become the new universal champion it was a falls count anywhere match uh, where uh, the match could not have been stopped for any reason whatsoever and it did not and WWE made up for their mistake from crown jewel via the controversy uh, after that main event match uh, a few weeks back with having the fiend Bray Wyatt become the new universal champion and now Brock Lesnar is on Monday Night Raw as the WWE Champion, and The Fiend Bray Wyatt is on Friday Night SmackDown as the Universal Champion. So the titles switch brands once again. Now, as mentioned, the main talking piece for today is WWE Crown Jewel. As mentioned, The Fiend Bray Wyatt defeated Seth Rollins to become the new Universal Champion. Also, you wake up the next day. As mentioned, I was planning on going to Buffalo, New York for Friday Night SmackDown. Still, in fact, did go to Buffalo for Friday Night SmackDown on Friday, November the 1st. Videos from that right here on YouTube. Be sure to go check those out. But we woke up Friday morning, November the 1st. Conflicting reports uh, about the uh, WWE uh, being stuck in Saudi Arabia. Uh, conflicting reports about this, that, who got out, who didn't, who's still over there, blah, 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 blah. Nonsense, as usual. Uh, people making up stories. Only the people that were over there know the cold, hard truth. Plain and simple. But as mentioned, I woke up Friday morning excited to go to Buffalo, but saw the news, of course, that uh, the WWE was still stuck in Saudi Arabia. Last Friday night for SmackDown, they had advertised the New Day versus the Revival for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, along with Bray Wyatt, just Bray Wyatt, not the Fiend Bray Wyatt, just Bray Wyatt, Firefly Funhouse Edition on Miz TV, along in the main event with the big dog Roman Reigns and all hail King Corbin. Now, since, obviously, those superstars were not on SmackDown last week, they announced that the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match along with the big dog Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin will take place this upcoming week, tomorrow night on Friday Night SmackDown in Manchester, England. But with basically the entire company, as mentioned, overseas, I honestly did not know what to expect uh, on SmackDown last week in Buffalo. Three-hour trip up north from where I'm at in central Pennsylvania, Uh, And SmackDown last week, uh, started to think about it. It was either going to be really, really good or really, really bad. No in-between whatsoever. But then I get notifications on my phone about uh, basically everything going on in the sports world, among other things. Uh, So more reports 
throughout the day. I got my notifications during the trip. More reports came out throughout the day, as mentioned. And nowadays, really, too, as well, it's hard to believe everything you read or hear. At least in my opinion, it is because, you know, I sure as hell don't. I mean, I don't know what you folks uh, think about that. But, I mean, it's it's really all hearsay, you know. And it's, it's hard to believe nowadays, especially in 2019, um, even the past 10 years, it's hard to believe um, what you read or hear on TV. Now, if it was because of mechanical issues uh, with the plane, I honestly don't know. Maybe, you know, there's problems with the first ever women's match for the WWE in Saudi Arabia as well. Or it could have been because Saudi Arabia owed the WWE some money for recent pay-per-views in the country um, but I honestly don't know nor do I care you know as long as the WWE gets home safe and sound and they did which they did uh, and that's really all that matters at that point and then at that point as well you move forward towards Survivor Series because the show must go on and the show did go on during Friday Night Smackdown last week in Buffalo, New York. But exactly, you know, what was going to happen was clearly unknown uh, to everyone in attendance, everybody watching at home uh, around the world, which was actually good for a change, though, too. And the ratings did show. Um, you know, but I started to think, you know, as mentioned, tonight's either going to be really, really good or bad because, you know, with everything going on, the situation, the WWE. Um, was in, I, I totally understand it. But if the WWE would, you know, pull some strings, it, it could work out. And whether that's have, you know, the superstars that didn't go to Saudi Arabia, Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Aleister Black, um, you know, have them on the show, have returning superstars for the WWE from Saudi Arabia who were on the private charter uh, that eventually didn't get to Buffalo in time to appear uh, for the show, but maybe if they got back in time uh, to have them appear at the end of the show, but however, they didn't get there until about 9.30, quarter to 10, last Friday night, regardless, so at that point, wouldn't matter. Maybe have some, you know, returning, you know, legends up here. Edge has been reported to be uh, returning. Hogan and Flair got out, um, you know, just pull some strings, make it work, show goes on, people will be happy, even if they brought out Vince McMahon, Stephanie, Triple H, uh, so on and so forth, which a couple of those they did in fact uh, have on the show, you know, for, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, people would be happy, and the ratings would spike, maybe even have some NXT superstars on the show, and that's actually what ended up happening, because as time progressed, uh, reports WWE flying in NXT uh, superstars to Buffalo for SmackDown tonight, and NXT Invasion Angle worked perfectly. They did not get to Buffalo until 7:55. SmackDown starts at 8 o'clock. Um, that's why, of course, Brock Lesnar kicked off the show. The promo went a little bit longer than expected. They showed the whole match from Crown Jewel with Kane Velasquez, which was only a couple minute match anyway. As mentioned, Lesnar retained his WWE Championship. Uh, as he made Cain Velasquez tap out to the Kamara lock, uh, and then Lesnar quits SmackDown, challenging, going after Rey Mysterio on Raw. Survivor Series now, it'll be for the WWE Championship, Brock Lesnar, Rey Mysterio, on November the 24th. Cain Velasquez and also Dominic, Rey Mysterio's son, I do believe will get involved one way or another. And then we had a match... Bailey versus Nikki Cross on SmackDown, the first official match of the evening. It was the second segment, and it went a little bit longer than expected, and it was because police escort for NXT superstars to get to the arena, uh, from what I've heard at least. Uh, whether or not that's exactly true or not, I honestly don't know, nor do I really care, as mentioned before, because it's all hearsay. You know, only the people that are truly involved know the cold hard truth about it. Uh, but then they only had a couple minutes to get set up for the Shayna Baszler attack 
on Bailey following the match. Um, so an NXT invasion angle, an NXT takeover of SmackDown because of the situation the WWE was uh, in fact in. Uh, but it also makes sense moving towards Survivor Series with now it'll be, as they mentioned during Crown Jewel for the first time ever, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT during Survivor Series as all three brands will battle for brand supremacy in Chicago on November the 24th. We'll also have TakeOver War Games the night before. NXT also uh, a few nights later, just a few nights ago now, took over Monday Night Raw in Long Island before the OC, as mentioned uh, earlier, retaliated, invaded NXT. A six-man tag match in the main event last night on NXT. It was the OC, the club, to sweep me once again, folks. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right here on YouTube as well. OC versus Ciampa, Tomasa Ciampa, Matt Riddle, and Keith Lee before Finn Balor came out. Uh, and then also Adam Cole. Adam Cole with a super kick on Styles as NXT stands tall once again. Just what a time to be alive uh, to be a professional wrestling fan. But uh, SmackDown... Uh, I thought it was a damn good show. People were saying uh, maybe the best SmackDown of all time. I don't know about that. Potentially, yeah. I mean, you'd have to go back 20 years and really sit down and go through episode by episode. But SmackDown, damn good show, I thought, with everything stacked against the WWE with the situation uh, they were in. Um, damn good match in the main event. In my opinion, the best match on TV so far for the WWE this year in 2019, it was Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole, baby, for the NXT Championship, with Cole retaining an NXT standing tall to close out Friday Night SmackDown last week in Buffalo after WWE Crown Jewel. Now, as mentioned, uh, you know we just had Crown Jewel Friday Night SmackDown. Uh, the Monday Night Raw this past week as well, uh, where Adam Cole main evented both shows. It was Adam Cole versus Daniel Bryan on SmackDown, and Adam Cole versus Seth Frickin' Rollins as well uh, for the NXT uh, Championship. Uh, both shows, both times in the main event, and Cole retains NXT stands tall as mentioned. Um, and then moving forward. Uh, you have uh, NXT TakeOver War Games, but NXT just took over uh, SmackDown and Raw, and they still found a way to stand tall during NXT last night. Now, moving forward, we'll have NXT War Games and Survivor Series. As mentioned, it'll be Raw, SmackDown, and NXT first time ever against one another. But before then, this weekend, November the 9th, Saturday night in Baltimore at Royal Farms Arena, all Elite Wrestling AEW Full Gear. First pay-per-view for AEW since their TV debut on TNT. Be sure to go check out my AEW Full Gear predictions right here on YouTube as well. No live reactions play-by-play -play though, unfortunately. NXT TakeOver War Games will have two War Games matches that Saturday night, November the 23rd, in Chi-Town, Chicago, Illinois. Could very well add some more matches. I would hope to God that I'll be adding more matches as only two War Games matches uh, have been announced. The only two matches in general. Uh, it'll be Rhea Ripley, Candice LeRae, Tegan Knox, along with Mia Yim versus Shayna Baszler, Bianca Belair, Io Shirai, and a to-be-announced superstar on Shayna Baszler's the NXT Women's Championships team. That'll be War Games in Chicago for NXT. And then also, on the men's side, we have the Undisputed Era, the NXT champion, Adam Cole, Bebe, along with Red Dragon, the NXT tag team champs, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, along with the NXT North American champion, Roderick Strong, the Undisputed Era, versus Tommaso Ciampa, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, and also a to-be-determined superstar, uh, in which it'll more than likely uh, be Johnny Gargano, to be honest with you. I'm thinking it could be Finn Balor, could be somebody, though, that I'm not even currently uh, thinking about. 
during the time of this recording moving forward. But some uh, Survivor Series matches also have been announced. As mentioned, it'll be Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio for the WWE Championship. And thank God they're not going to be doing... Hell, they still might. But thank God they're not doing a champion versus champion versus champion match with Brock Lesnar, Bray Wyatt, The Fiend himself as the new Universal Champion, along with Adam Cole, Bebe, the NXT Champion, as he'll, as he'll be in a War Games match the night before. But they still could do that. They still could have uh, The Fiend face off versus somebody over on the SmackDown side. Maybe another rematch with Seth frickin' Rollins for the Universal Championship. Adam Cole, if he has an NXT Championship match uh, Saturday night as well, along with his War Games match, they could do that. They could save the NXT Championship match for Survivor Series. Honestly, don't know. Mid-card championships will be in a uh, triple threat champions versus champions versus champions match in a champions match. Uh, it'll be uh, rumored. They haven't made it official yet, but it's looking that way. It'll be AJ Styles, the phenomenal one himself, as the United States champion, up against the artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura, the current Inter Intercontinental Champion, along with uh, Roderick Strong, the NXT North American Champion in NXT. But however, they did officially announce Becky Lynch, Bayley, and Shayna Baszler in a champions match. Raw Women's Champ, Friday Night SmackDown Women's Champ, NXT Women's Champ, in a match against one another triple threat at Survivor Series along with the tag team champions match. Viking Raiders, War Machine, The Revival, and Undisputed Era. So we'll have to see uh, moving forward if that changes though because as mentioned Revival New Day on Friday Night Smackdown in a match that was supposed to happen last week but because of Saudi Arabia being stuck in uh, Riyadh uh, basically no one got back to the states in time as the whole company was stuck in Saudi uh, due to whether or not it was mechanical issues or not I honestly don't know I thought at first it was because of the first ever women's match uh, for the WWE in Saudi Arabia because if you watch that pay-per-view if you watch my live reactions play by play WWE crown jewel last week Natalia along with Lacey Evans were getting uh, water bottles among other things thrown at them during uh, their entrances so uh, some fans happy about it obviously some not though at the same time but uh, um, you know basically everybody's stuck over in Saudi Arabia no one made it back for Smackdown NXT takeover of Smackdown makes sense moving towards Survivor Series as mentioned um, but the champions tag team match at Survivor Series could very well change because the revival New Day match was supposed to happen last week but it didn't happening this week now over in Manchester, England, and uh, I would assume we're going to be hearing um, spoilers beforehand because they'll be taping as it'll be local time five hours ahead here Friday afternoon now, um, whenever that time does come for Friday Night Smackdown in England, if that makes sense. Hopefully I said that correct, but um, we could have Viking Raiders New Day and Undisputed Era. Viking Raiders Revival Undisputed Era, though, is the current plan moving forward. And then as well, more matches to be announced, uh, so we'll see what direction um, that goes with, with Survivor Series. And then TLC uh, in uh, the middle of December in Minneapolis uh, before the Royal Rumble in Houston at Minute Maid Park, home of the uh, Houston Astros, who lost in Game 7 of the World Series last week to the Washington Nationals. So congrats to the Nats. Along with the next Saudi Arabia pay-per-view, reportedly going to be held in February next year, 2020, and then Elimination Chamber, Fastlane, and WrestleMania 36 in Tampa, Florida. And then also some injured superstars, I would believe, uh, should be returning uh, sometime soon. Elias, Samoa Joe, to name a few. I would hope to God they will be returning by the end of the year. Jinder Mahal as well we'll have to find out and see though and the only way we'll find out is if we watch the product and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this audio recording this video on youtube be sure to hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to gridiron ring right here on youtube but as always as mentioned we'll see what happens and then in the next few weeks and months to come as usual as well 
more live streams on Periscope along with more prediction videos right here on YouTube. And uh, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to Gridiron Ring, Gridiron 18, Cool Hand Luke 96, myself, your host, the Encyclopedia of Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96 on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and also over on Periscope. Links are in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, as mentioned, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to share this as well on social media. And also, subscribe button, little notification bell as well. And uh, those are my thoughts and opinions following WWE Crown Jewel. I know I backtracked a little bit towards uh, SummerSlam moving forward, but with everything that's been going on in my world, and uh, in the professional wrestling world in both AEW and WWE. I figured I'd put it all together as one and just uh, just unleash my thoughts and opinions on um, you know everything that's been happening uh, as of late. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, as mentioned, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. I could really care less, to be honest with you. Uh, but um, yeah, more live streams over on Periscope, along with prediction videos right here on YouTube. And... Uh, like, follow, subscribe, Gridiron Ring, Gridiron 18, Cool Hand Luke 96 on social media. As always, links are in the description below.